Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave and today I'm starting a brand new playlist. This is called Option Basics. So I've had this request quite a bit and I think I can be your resource of choice for people that want to learn about options. If you're brand new, this is your playlist to go to. So I'll link it down below in the description. But today I wanna to walk through, this is day one, step one. We're gonna write out an option completely and talk through all the language that comes along with it because I know it can be confusing when you're brand new. From there, in subsequent videos, we're going to break down this into individual components and talk more and more about it. So when you go to this playlist, you'll be able to find everything that you need to get started with options. And then we'll have some example trades in there and then some real world applications where you can take this and enhance your portfolio right now. So if you're one of the people out there that are buying stocks and ETFs and your dollar cost averaging in, that's great. That means you got a nice big stake there. You're working towards your future. But I think we can enhance it. So I like my steak Oscar style, lump crab meat, sauce, everything on top. And I think that is what options adds to all of this. So that's what I hope to accomplish with this playlist. So link down in the description. If this is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. If you're here to learn about options, I imagine you've had some experience with the stock market. So over here, You've got your stocks. You've been buying and selling. Maybe you have some stocks, ETFs, got a nice portfolio going. Over here, we have the options market. This is a derivative of the stock market over here. So it derives its value from the underlying equities over here. So today our example is gonna be on Coca-Cola. As Coca-Cola moves up and down, the options associated with Coca-Cola are gonna move around with it. So it derives its value from the stock market, enough said. Now, we're gonna write out an option today in order to do that in the real world, you're gonna to have to call your brokerage account and make sure you have options trading turned on in your account. So typically level one is fine, maybe level two. Usually brokerages go level three or level four if you start getting really fancy. You're not gonna need that initially. So level one or level two, but don't even turn it on until you get educated and you feel like you're fully getting comfortable with the idea of how these things work. All right, so let's write out our very first option. And when we write an option, we are the seller of an option. Somewhere out in the market, there's a buyer for this option. Now there are perks to being both a seller and a buyer and we'll go over that as we go through. But day one, step one is all about writing out an option and putting all the instructions in there that we want and then selling it on the market. So think of yourself like you're an insurance agent and you're out there selling car insurance, for example, right? You go door to door and you finally find somebody in the market there that wants to buy your option. You get to collect money for that, just like an insurance premium. You get to collect that premium, put it in your pocket. And you also got to detail all the instructions that you wanted to have in there and now they are in control of it. They own the option contract, so they have the right, but not the obligation to exercise that option contract whenever they want. That's what we gave up, but I'm feeling pretty good because we got to pick, make all those decisions when we get to put them in there, and that's what we're gonna walk through now. So let's get out our pen and paper and let's write down our underlying security here. In this case, we picked Coca-Cola because it tastes so good, it's great for our skin, right? It puts all that sugar that we need in our body. So whatever your reasoning is behind it, we're going with the example of Coca-Cola, but I'm assuming you've done your research and you love Coca-Cola as much as I do. So our next decision has already been made, but the brokerage is gonna ask for this information. So since we are writing out an option, that means we are selling to open a position. So our action will say sell to open, and it's gonna say minus one contract once we sell this on the market to somebody else that has the matching criteria on the other end. Over there, they're doing buy to open. So they're buying to open a contract, we're selling to open a contract, and together we have one contract open. But ours is gonna say minus one, theirs is going to say plus one. Just important to understand that that's the action that we would select if we wanted to write out an option like this. Our next decision is all about how many contracts we wanna trade. And this is, this is really important to understand. One contract equals 100 shares of the underlying security. All right, so Coca-Cola is trading right now for $56 a share. 100 shares of Coca-Cola would then cost $5,600. So if you wanted to buy 100 shares in order to sell a call contract, we'll get into more of this, then you would need 100 shares and it would cost you $5,600. Likewise, if you wanted to sell a put contract, and we'll get into this more as well, it would cost you, maybe you put a strike price of 50, $5,000. So as a seller, it's really important to understand that you're gonna have to have some money set aside in order to either accumulate 100 shares or to sell a put and be able to buy 100 shares if it does get put to you. So again, we'll go over this in more detail, but just understand that you're gonna to have to have some collateral to write out option contracts. Now, a lot of people like the other side of it, they like to become buyers right away because it doesn't cost very much. They just have to pay that little bit of premium to have a chance to make a lot of money. 
And that's what draws people in. But it's not necessarily the best way to go about it. But important factor here right now is to understand that one contract equals 100 shares. So for today's example with Coca-Cola, we're just going to do, we're doing one contract. Next decision is what type of option contract are we going to sell? And there's two types, puts and calls. And they're pretty easy to understand when you start thinking about the language, right? So the first one is a call contract. So we can sell a call contract. And that gives the other people the right, but not the obligation, to call away our shares, right? So if we sell a call, they have the option of calling away shares that we own. So if we have 100 shares of Coca-Cola, they have the option of calling that, that away, just taking it away from us. I know, so rude, right? Whereas a put contract allows them to put shares to us. You got to take them, right? Because you sold me this contract. I don't want this anymore. You have to take them. So call, call it away, put, put it to you. So which should we choose, a put or a call? Well, it really depends on your feelings on Coca-Cola stock. But in general, and I stress in general, we sell a put contract when we're slightly bullish to neutral on the stock. We think that the stock is going to go up or sustain in value, right? That's bullish to neutral. And we sell this because we get to collect a premium by selling this put, thinking it's not going to go down. We get to keep that money. And if the stock goes up, then great, we just keep that premium. Whereas with a call contract, in that case, we think it's going to be slightly bearish to neutral for the stock. So we think Coca-Cola is going to go down a little bit or maybe sustain. In that case, we can sell the call contract, collect the premium. And because we think it's going down, we'll get to keep that premium. Nothing else will happen. So that's kind of the general idea of when you would sell a put and when you would sell a call. So after countless hours of research into Coca-Cola stock, sweating away all day, we've determined that with it at $56 a share in this tough 2022 market, that it's a pretty good value. So we decide that we're going to sell a put contract. So two wonderful things occur immediately when we make this decision. First of all, we know we're going to sell a put contract and be able to collect a premium. So we get some money right now for selling this. The second thing is we get to write in there the language of how we're going to do this. So we determine that with it at $56 a share, $50 would be a great price. I'd be happy to buy 100 shares at $50 a share. We get to put that in there too. So we get to collect a premium and we get to determine the price that we're willing to pay for this stock. Two wonderful things. And that is our next decision, our strike price. That's the price that we agree to pay for this if it gets assigned to us. So in this case, since we're selling a put contract, remember a put contract allows them to put stock to us, but they can only put it to us at our strike price, which is $50 a share. So based on all that research, there's countless hours that we put into this. We should be happy, even in this current market, that we're buying Coca-Cola at $50 a share. If we can come to grips with all that, then this is a great way to go, right? Because we're collecting a premium and we're agreeing to buy it at a price that we would like anyway, right? $50 a share. So strike price, the price that we're willing to pay for it, goes into our contract. So the last piece of information that we need in order to call this options contract complete and go sell it on the open market is an expiration date. So most popular ETFs and stocks have an options market and you'll be able to find options trading on those stocks and ETFs. So with Coca-Cola, it trades weekly options. You can find expiration dates every single Friday evening for this next several weeks out. So what's a good one to pick? Well, a popular way to go out about is like a monthly option. So we could give them about 30 days till this thing expires and is worthless. So at the end of this, it could be assigned between now and that day but it probably won't. Again, we'll talk about that in another video as we go forward. But usually what's going to happen is this thing will expire worthless if it's above our strike price of $50. It will get assigned to you if it's below $50 at expiration. So there is risk involved with this. It's not risk-free, but anything above 50, you will not have this assigned to you. Anything below 50, it will get assigned to you. That means if it drop, falls to 40 or $35 a share, which it could do. You've seen this crazy market. It'll get assigned to you at $50 a share. You'll have to spend $5,000 to purchase those 100 shares and they'll end up in your account ready to be traded on Monday morning. And the very last part of this, with the criteria that we filled out here, you get to go and sell this on the market. You get to collect that premium. In this case, based on this criteria, you would collect about $50 and that would go in your pocket the day you sell that. Nobody gets to take that away from you. That is yours to keep and go have that sushi dinner. So there you go. You wrote your first ever options contract. You sold it, you collected that 50 bucks. So now what happens? Well, you got 30 days till expiration. 
to wait around and see what happens. Now, if you check your account and you actually did this, you would see that $50 going up and down and all around, right? As the stock moved up and down. In this case, since you sold a put, if Coca-Cola stock continues to rise, 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 then that $50 you'll see will be less and less and less. That means if you ever wanted to close out the contract, it wouldn't cost you very much to get out of the contract. So you receive 50 bucks, Coca-Cola takes off. You might be able to close it out in two weeks for $10. And then of course you made $40, right? Whereas if it starts to trend down toward your strike price, that $50 would become 60, 70, 80, $90. It would go up and up and up. And that's what the buyer wants to have happen. So we're kind of betting against them. But if we still have that criteria here where we're like, eh, I'm okay buying it at 50 bucks a share, then you should feel pretty good about your position overall. And I think that's a great way to start getting into uh, selling options if that's an avenue you want to pursue. And here's that trade in fidelity. I was off a little bit on my premium. It was just a guesstimate. But here it actually is. This is about a 30 day option on Coca-Cola with it at $56 a share. So if you have a different brokerage, it should look similar to this, maybe a little different. But the action is sell to open one put contract with an expiration on November 4th, about 30 days from now, with that $50 strike price we talked about. So with Coke at 56, I'm not buying it unless it goes to $50 or less by that expiration date. And at market, I'm going to collect somewhere between that bid and that ask price. So let's say, let's say about $35 is the premium that I get to take right now. So it's going to be a cheap sushi dinner, but I'm going to get a little bit of a sushi dinner. So there you go, writing an option, day one, step one. And we're gonna to continue to build upon this and break it down. But if I brought up some questions and didn't fill in all the gaps for you based off of this, ask me down below or shoot me an email. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe and uh, I'd love to have you along. We're gonna to continue to build this playlist. Anything that you wanna see or you have questions about, again, just holler. Now, I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time when we talk more about these basic options and fill in this information. See you next time, take care. Whoop. Mm-hmm.